In Hawaii, something special has just occurred at the Kilauea volcano. Not only did Kilauea produce a new eruption earlier today, but this eruption occurred in a unique region where no eruptions of any kind had occurred in a whopping 50 years. As at 12.30 a.m. local time on June 3, 2024, a strong earthquake swarm triggered by the upward motion of magma that even produced a magnitude 4.1 earthquake culminated in a brand new eruption approximately 16 miles northeast of the city of Pahala. Within minutes, a 1-kilometer or 3,280-foot-long fissure appeared in this section of Kilauea's southwest rift zone, erupting molten rock at what I estimate to be a rate of 50 cubic meters per second. While the fissure does not currently appear to be expanding, it has seemingly formed a large crack with 3 to 5 foot wide gaps in the ground due to the presence of shallow magma pushing rock apart. What makes this beautiful eruption special is its location in Kilauea's southwest rift zone, as not a single eruption has occurred there since 1974. In the same time span, dozens of eruptive episodes have instead occurred at Kilauea's summit caldera or in its east rift zone, which has seemingly remained the dominant flank zone of weakness, while the southwest rift zone remained completely quiet. That was until late 2023 and early 2024 when two separate magmatic intrusions in the seismic southwest rift zone cracked overlying rock but failed to reach the surface and erupt. These prior events loosen rock in the region, allowing for magma during the last 24 hours to successfully reach the surface from the seismic southwest rift zone segment and erupt. While well, this entire fissure initially was all erupting at the eruption's onset, within 9 hours only one third of it was still erupting at a rate less than 10% of what was initially observed. This seemingly follows the patterns of activity which partially distinguishes Kilauea's southwest rift zone from its east rift zone. While the southwest rift zone eruptions are often quite brief and do not involve much lava, the east rift zone eruptions are longer lived and involve a greater volume of lava. To portray what I mean, I will highlight three of the last four prior eruptions in Kilauea's southwest rift zone. While the 1974 eruption lasted 6 hours, the 1971 eruption lasted 6 days, while the 1868 eruption lasted only 12 hours. Each of these eruptions occurred on fissures which followed one of the two regional trend lines and erupted between 183,000 and 14.3 million cubic meters of lava. This might initially sound like a lot of lava, but in reality these are fairly small figures. In fact, of these three, I must say that the 1868 short-lived eruption currently appears to have the highest level of similarity to the ongoing eruption. Very little lava has been ejected, with my personal estimate suggesting an area of about 10 acres of land has been covered in a thin layer of lava during the first six hours. If this decline in activity continues, then the southwest rift zone eruption may completely cease by tomorrow. Even if this does not happen and a longer-lived eruptive episode does occur, the good news is that zero structures excluding the occasional piece of scientific monitoring equipment are in harm's way, with lava likely to travel to the southwest before heading straight south. However, since volumes of sulfur dioxide are being emitted, there is the potential for unhealthy levels of this gas to blow into the city of Pahala in the next 24 hours. I do not expect the ongoing eruption to cause an east rift zone eruption as the two rift zones have never simultaneously erupted and aren't really that well linked, and I do not expect the current eruption to precede something larger in the same southwest rift zone.